Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Now it's good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We most certainly appreciate your presence. We welcome everyone. May the Lord bless you. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to Northside Baptist Church Hour. That's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. I'm hoping during this hour coming up we can be an inspiration to you. And you can help us out by calling someone on the phone and have them to tune in and get the Northside Baptist Church Hour. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to two places in your Bible. Turn to Genesis chapter 5 and Hebrews chapter 11. Genesis chapter 5 and Hebrews chapter 11. Now, if you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you're tuned to this station where you're now listening each day at uh, 12 o'clock noon, Monday through Saturday, you can get the daily broadcast. I hope you're getting it. If not, tune in and get it. We appreciate it. We're sending out our cassette tapes. The singing and the message today will be on cassette tape, and it will be tape number 147. 147 is the number of the cassette tape that we'll have today, the singing and the message. Now we'll send these out for a gift of $3 each for the tape, and the money is used to help pay for radio time. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. If you'd like to have one of our brochures on a proposed Holy Land tour, Request that, we'd be glad to send you a brochure. Now in Genesis chapter 5, I'm going to read a verse of scripture. If you remember last Sunday, I preached on the first man to ever die on the earth. We brought a message pertaining to that man. Today I'm going to bring a message on the first man that went to heaven without dying, recorded in the Bible. Now last Sunday we saw the first man that died Today we're going to see the first man that did not die, the first man that's mentioned in the Bible that went to heaven that never died. He never tasted death. And if you have your Bible open at Genesis chapter 5, uh, we'll begin reading with verse 22. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. The Bible said he was not, that is, he left this earth. He was not, because God took him. Now, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, reading verses 5 and 6, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now the Bible tells us in verse 5 of Hebrews 11, that this man Enoch was translated, and he should not see death, and was not. That meant they couldn't find him. They sought for him. They searched out places where they thought he might be, but they couldn't find the man Enoch. He went home without dying. So we want to talk about this man in the next few minutes. The first man to ever go to heaven without dying. Now you may say, Preach Edwards, do you have any other men that did that? Yes, we have Elijah. Elijah went to heaven without dying. You may say, Preach Edwards, are there anyone yet in the future that will make it to heaven without dying? Yes. All saved people on the earth will go to heaven without dying when the rapture takes place. Now you may be in that number. You may be one in the number that will go with the rapture. I feel like we're just that close to the rapture. Wouldn't it be wonderful to go to heaven without dying? Well, you have that hope. You may be. You may be in that number that will go to heaven without dying. But I want to talk about the first man that went to heaven without dying. The Bible tells us that this man lived back in a day when they didn't have a complete Bible, back in a day when they didn't even have the Old Testament, let alone the New, back in a day when they didn't have churches on almost every street corner, 
Back in a day when there's only a few believers, this man, the Bible says, walk with God. Now we have people today that have Bibles in their homes, Testaments in their pockets, and they see many uh, Testaments and Bibles and Christian literature. They see many churches. They associate themselves with many saved people, and yet they can't seem to walk with God. Now this man walked with God back in a day when he had no encouragement, no real fellowship to mount anything. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1, you ought to walk in to please God so you would abound more and more. So if you're walking with God, you're growing, you're abounding, you're becoming stronger every day that you walk with God. Not only are you abounding, but that means if you walk with God that you're living a surrendered life. Now you can't walk with God and walk in your own way and have your own way about everything you desire. You'll have to surrender. Surrender to God and live a surrendered life to the Lord. This means you must agree with God. The Bible says in the book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 3, Can two walk together except they be agreed? So you'll have to agree with the Lord. You'll have to bow your knee to this book, the Word of God. This is God's Word. What God says in this book is true. Now you'll have to believe that. You can't walk with God and doubt this book. Therefore, these liberals, the infidels, and modernists that do not believe in the infallibility of the book of God, they can't walk with God. You must believe this Bible in order to walk with God because the Bible says two can't walk together except they be agreed. And then not only that, if you walk with God, you'll have to walk in light. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7, But if we walk in the light as He's in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses us from all sin. So in order to walk with God like Enoch of old did, you'll have to walk in the light. This means that you must believe in the coming judgment of God. I believe that, and I believe that you believe that. You that believe this Bible, you believe in the coming judgment of God. Now Enoch had a son born, and you know what he named his son? He named him Methuselah. And he lived to be 969 years old. He's the oldest recorded man in the Bible. He lived longer than any other man that's recorded in the Word of God, 969 years. But that name is not without great significance. The name Methuselah means when he is gone, it shall be sent. When he is gone, it shall be sent. Now, what is the meaning of that? The meaning of that is when Methuselah dies, God will send the flood. That speaks of judgment. Now, Enoch knew that flood was coming. He knew it was coming a thousand years before it came, and he named his son Methuselah. God wanted him to name that boy Methuselah because when he is dead, then it shall be sent, the flood shall come. Now when Enoch died, he lived 969 years, and he died. And when he died, God sent the flood upon the earth. His name implied that. So Enoch, therefore, the man that went to heaven without dying, believed in the coming judgment of God. Now you have people today that like to talk about the love of God, and that's wonderful. They like to talk about the grace of God, and that's marvelous. But they never like to mention the judgment of God. Now, just as certain as you listen to me today, that's coming a judgment. The judgment of God is coming upon this earth. God's wrath is coming upon the earth. That time is coming. As certain as you're listening to me today, and he didn't believe that. Now, to the second thing I want to say about this man that went to heaven, the first man to ever go to heaven without dying, there's something else I want to say about him, and that is... He had a testimony that he pleased God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now when Enoch lived on the earth, he had one person that he wanted to please, and that person was God. Now you must seek to please God before anyone. If you will please the Lord, then God will help you to take care of others that might not wholeheartedly agree with you. But number one, please the Lord. Be sure you're doing what God wants you to do. Be sure you're in the will of God. It doesn't matter what people might think about you. What some people speak, they speak so loud that you can't hear what they're saying because of the, the life they live. Now you need to realize that 
uh, then you must please God Almighty. And if people don't like it, let them lump it. Now, if you're in the center of God's will and pleasing the Lord, don't you worry about people thinking something of you. I remember back when I first started preaching, and I, I just surmise that many young preachers do the same. Uh, when I first started out preaching, I wanted people to enjoy my sermons. I wanted them to speak well of my sermons. And I was almost always anxious to kind of feel out my wife and see what she thought about my sermon and what she thought the people might thought about, think about it or what they thought about it. And I wanted to please the people. I wanted them to say that was a good sermon. I wanted them to say that he did some good preaching. I wanted all the people to speak well of my preaching. Now that was kind of natural being a young preacher, just a young boy at that time, being anxious for people to enjoy and be pleased with my sermons. Now today, after more than 40 years in the ministry, it's changed around. I'm afraid today that everybody will like my sermons. I'm afraid everybody will speak well of my sermons. The Bible says, woe is the man that everybody speaks well of. Now when they cease to cuss me and lie on me and slander me and talk about me and criticize me, then I'm going to check up and find out where I'm slipping. As long as I preach this book, like I preached it for over 40 years. I'm going to have some of God's people love me and appreciate me. I'm going to have some to criticize me. I'm going to have the devil's crowd to lie on me and slander me and do everything they can against me. That goes along with the preaching of the whole counsel of God. Now I can come to this pulpit and tickle ears and scratch backs and make everybody feel good and brag on people in their sins and let them go home cop in their sins and they say, my, what a wonderful pastor we do have. Kind of like the preacher that had been at this church for a long period of time and, and he resigned his church to leave. And one good sister said, you know, I never didn't know what sin was till that man came to be our preacher. Now, beloved, listen to me. We need to realize we're not going to please everybody. We must preach the whole counsel of God and if people like it all right, if they don't like it all right. Now you must live for the Lord. And if you're not living for God, then of course uh, people might speak very well of you. Everybody, sinners and all might speak well of you. But if you're living for God, somebody is not going to like what you do and, and, and how you serve God and where you go to church and, and what you do for God in your church. Somebody's not going to like that. And that shouldn't worry you one iota. You should praise God and go and serve God anyway. Now, he pleads the Lord. Now, the apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10, Do I persuade men? Our God, do I seek to please men? If I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. It's not my business to please people. It's my business to please God, get out the word of God, and then let God take care of the people. Now, the person that pleases God must be accepted of the Lord. The Bible tells us that in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 4. If you please the Lord, you accept it of the Lord. Things done for him must be according to his will. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 21. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Work it in you would that which is well pleasing. And in his sight through Jesus Christ. Now to please the Lord, you must serve him according to his will. And if you surrender to God, God will work in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Things done for him must be done in humility. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10, Paul said, By the grace of God, I am what I am. Now you need to be humble before God and say, By the grace of God, I am what I am. When you see others around you that's living in sin, you might say, By the grace of God, that could be me. Now remember, humble yourself and say, By the grace of God, I am what I am. It must be done in sincerity. In Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 3, the Bible said, Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Now Hezekiah knew he was going to die, and he turned his face toward the wall and he prayed to God. He was very humble. He begged the Lord to let him live longer. And God extended his lifespan 15 years. He's very humble about that. And then it in, you must have in mind the view of God's glory. The end must be to the glory of God if you please the Lord. If what you're doing, you're doing it to your own glory and just to satisfy yourself, then you're thinking wrong. First of all, you must say, I'm doing what I'm doing to the glory of God. I go to church to the glory of God. 
I sing to the glory of God. I pray the glory of God. I give up my tithes and offerings to the glory of God. I witness, I teach the glory of God. I preach the glory of God. You must do it to the glory of God. And if you do it to the glory of God and keep that in mind, you can please the Lord. At any time you cease to do that, then you're in trouble. You must stay humble before God. There's a young preacher one time that left the old country church and he had in, uh, of course, his um, predecessor did not have a chance to go to the seminary. And, and uh, so he uh, got, had a chance to go to the seminary. And so he went and he came back all cocky and he knew it all, had all the answers. And he was to preach that Sunday morning and he came strutting down the aisle, his head in the air, his chest thrown out and he got up and he just made a flop. He couldn't preach. He couldn't get his message across. He couldn't seem to get anything accomplished. And then he just bowed his head and walked down out of the pulpit and toward the back and sat down. And there's a dear old gray-headed lady sitting down on the front. And she made this statement. She said, if that young man had a gone up into that pulpit like he came out, he could come out like he went in. And how true that is. We must be humble before God and do what we do to his glory. Then we find number four that this man that went to heaven without dying prophesied and preached about the judgment of the Lord and the coming of the Lord. Now Enoch didn't mind preaching on the second coming. He preached on the second coming. He preached on the second coming of Christ before he ever came the first time. No doubt somebody said, now listen, brother Enoch, here you are preaching today on the second coming of the Lord and it hadn't been the first time. He said, never mind, never mind. He's coming the first time and he will come the second time. And so I'm preaching today on the second coming. You'll find that recorded in the little epistle of Jude, verses 14 and 15. Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all. Now Enoch preached about the Lord coming with ten thousands of his saints. That's the second coming. That's not the first coming when he came the first time. It's the second coming of Christ. When he's coming with 10,000 of the saints, set up his kingdom upon the earth. He preached on that. And the Bible said he was the seventh from Adam. Adam was number one and right on down the line. Cain and Abel on down the line to number seven. Enoch was number seven. Now the number seven is the number of perfection. Or the number of completeness. And he went to heaven without dying. Old number seven did. I like number seven. And he preached about the coming of the Lord and the judgment of the Lord. This man that went to heaven without dying. Number five, we find the man that went to heaven without dying was translated. You know, he was just walking along and serving God and walking with God. All of a sudden, he was translated. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. See, God changed him. This man went to heaven without dying. God did likewise for Elijah. And then God's going to do likewise for the people that's alive at the rapture. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. There's a dear lady one morning. It couldn't sleep. A baby kept crying during the night. It, she sought in vain to find uh, well, what to do to comfort that baby, stop the baby from crying. And she said, Lord, I need help. I've, I've come to the end. I don't know what to do to this baby. It keeps crying. Uh, just give me a thought. And God laid this scripture on her heart. Behold, we shall all, not all sleep, but we shall be changed. So she got up and changed the baby's diaper, went to bed, and went back to sleep. And so we need to realize that we're not all going to be uh, sleeping, we're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, according to the Bible. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17, Then we which are lying remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds of the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's a group that's going out without dying, like Enoch did. Enoch went to heaven without dying, and some will do likewise. And you may be in that number to go to heaven without dying. Then thought number six is, he bypassed the undertaker's parlor and the graveyard. You know, when you go by a funeral home, there's something about an undertaker's parlor, a funeral home, and uh, you just, there's something about that. It speaks, doesn't it? 
you're riding down the highway and you see a cemetery. There's something about that that is a reminder. That tells us that people are dying and their bodies are carried to the mortuary and then their bodies are carried out to the cemetery. All right, Enoch jumped over, a leapfrogged over the mortuary and the cemetery and skipped right on into heaven. The undertakers didn't have a chance to get a hold of him. And they couldn't bury him. The graveyard had no place for him. He went to heaven without dying. I reminded the preacher that went to church one Sunday and he forgot his teeth. After he got to church, his teeth was back home and he couldn't have speak. He said, people, I tell you, I'm terribly sorry, but I, I forgot my teeth and I'm in terrible bad shape. And the man raised his hand back there and said, uh, uh, sir, I have a, a set here in my coat pocket. You might try them and see if they work. And he brought them down and the preacher tried them and said, no, they don't fit. I'm no better off. And the man went back to sit down and the preacher said, I just can't use these. It won't work. And the man raised his hand and said, the sir, said, uh, I have another set here. You might try them. And so he said, bring them down. And he brought the second set down and the preacher tried them. And man, they worked fine. That preacher said, you know, sir, uh, you know, it's always good to have a good dentist in the audience. Man said, sir, I'm not a dentist, I'm an undertaker. But anyway, he got some teeth that, that worked pretty well. But you know, a lot of people don't have to go by the way of the graveyard or the mortuary. They'll go to heaven without dying. And then he jumped over the, the uh, mortuary, he jumped over the cemetery, and jumped right into heaven according to the Bible. By faith, he was translated, he should not see death, it was not found. You know, when Elijah went to heaven in a bowl of fire, a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, they tried to find him. The Bible said in 2 Kings 2, 17, they searched for him, but they couldn't find him. They tried to find the man Elijah. They sent out a searching party, but they couldn't find him. Nobody could find him. They said, well, maybe he's hid around him, but they couldn't find him. He went to heaven without dying. Now, when the rapture takes place, all these liberals and infidels and modernists and GBI and all the rest, are going to look for your body, but they won't find you. You'll be in heaven. They say, I wonder what happened. That old crowd of people used to go to Northside. They all disappeared. I wonder what happened to these other fundamentalists that believe the Bible. They, they're gone. We can't find them. That's going to happen when Jesus comes at the rapture. Then finally, he was called home to spend the day with God. Every day, Enoch would walk with God day by day. He walked with God for 300 years without a break. Every day after that boy was born, uh, and Methuselah was born 300 years, he walked with God without a break. He fellowshiped with God every day, walking with God every day, 300 years without a break and walking with God. We have people today can't walk with God from one revival to another. We have people today can't walk with God hardly from one Sunday to another. I've been in revival meetings and meet somebody, I thought, man, that person's on fire for God. They impress me. Go back maybe a year or so later and say, Pastor, where's brother so-and-so? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, Brother Edwards, he backslid on us. He don't come to church anymore. Couldn't walk with God one revival to another. Shame on us. We ought to be able to walk with God every day. Enoch walked with God. And the Bible said he went home to be with God. God took him. Now, this man Enoch just kept walking and walking. Day by day, kept walking and talking with God, fellowshipping with God. In Genesis chapter 5 and verse 24, the Bible said, God took him. Now, I want that to sink deep down into your ears. That's coming a time when God is going to take you. That's coming a time when God will take me. That's coming a time when God's going to take all saved people at the rapture. The taking is of the Lord. Called a man the other day. Used to be a member, he and his wife. His wife passed away, and I called him. I said, uh, uh, Charlie, I'm sorry about your wife. I said, uh, Charlie, that you, your wife uh, uh, passed away. And, and I said, remember this, the Lord never makes a mistake. And that's true. It's a time came for the taking. That's a time coming when God is going to take you. And we know what it is. The rapture may take place today, and when the rapture takes place, God will take us all. And this man Enoch walked with God and God took him, the Bible tells us. He left the earth walking with God. He might have had on his big hat, his brogans, his boots or whatnot. But he kept walking with God and walking with God. And all of a sudden, he saw a beautiful golden city. No doubt he said, Lord, what's that? God said, son, 
That's the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Maybe you look back toward the earth and you saw a big ball back toward the earth. It's what they said, that's the earth. You walking with me today, son, and you going home to spend the day with me. And so Enoch went home to spend the day with God. And the Bible said there's no night there, so he's still spending the day with God. If he goes to spend the day with God and there's no night there, then he's still there spending the day with God. Up now up in space, the astronauts up there, the Americans sent up, I believe, five men and two women. Yesterday, a day before, they were up there way above the earth. When they look back toward the earth, all they can see is a little round ball. Maybe something looks like a basketball, a smaller, maybe large. But anyway, they're up there in space. Now up above the earth, going around and around the earth. Old Brother Enoch, he walked with God. He passed all the stars, the Milky Ways and whatnot, and all the planets, and went right on in and walked right on into heaven. And if he was dressed in blue denims and had on his boots and his hat, when he got there and turned and looked at himself, the Bible said they shall walk with me in white. He was dressed in a robe as white as snow when he arrived in heaven. Old man Enoch went home to be with God and he went home without dying. Time cut short in this life is added eternity over there. There's no night there and he's spending the day. My dear old mother and dad has gone on to be with the Lord. And uh, if my mother uh, stays in heaven, say 30 years or 20 years before I go, say 20 years, that means you spend 20 years in the presence of God longer than I will. What's taken from this life down here is added to eternity over there. So your loved one that's going on, however length of time they remain there before you go, that signifies how much more time that they're going to enjoy heaven and be in heaven than you will. So why worry? They better off than we are. They have the opportunity of being there in heaven. And if they're there 20 years before you go, they have enjoyed 20 wonderful years while you were down here fighting the battles, trying to serve God, fighting the devil, suffering in your body, facing the world's ills. They are there praising God. And what's taken from this life down here is added eternity over there. So you must remember that and you'll be glad your loved ones in a better world and not down here to face the evils of this day. Yes, Enoch is the man, the first man that ever lived on the earth to go to heaven without dying. But he's not the last one. At the rapture, all saved people will go to heaven without dying. And you may be in that number. If you're not saved, if the rapture takes place today, your feet will never leave the ground. But if you are saved, you go out to meet Jesus in there and God will change you in a moment in a twink of an eye and you're going to be with the Lord. Thank you so kindly you've listened well. Stand to your feet, bow your heads for prayer. Father, I pray today you'll take the message and that you'll use it. And may your name be honored and may Jesus be glorified. God, we're so glad that we can say there'll be multitudes that'll go to heaven without dying when the rapture takes place. God, speak to somebody today. Save somebody, Father, even in the radio listening audience. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Debbie's playing for us and why she does. If you're here unsaved, backslidden, want to join the church, you come forward for some reason God is speaking to you about, I want you to come while she plays for us. You obey the Lord and do what God tells you to do. Not saved if you're backslidden or if you want to join the church you may obey God at this time or for any other reason God's prompting your heart waiting just another moment or so